Hey everybody, Eric with MountainModernLife.com and today we're going to show you how to create a modular desk which can be great for tiny space living, uh, especially living in our RV. Now you guys may have seen a, a couple years ago we actually came out with a video and a post on how we created the flip up desk in our bedroom. Well it worked great for the last couple years especially when I would get back there on my laptop. Where the problem came in is that when we would move Katie's desktop back there, uh, there just wasn't enough workspace for her to comfortably work and get things done. Um, so that's when we knew, knew we needed to change something up and we wanted to create more workspace without taking away from our living space. So this is what we came up with. Um, and to be completely honest, uh, a couple months ago, we actually went ahead and created this modular desk uh, using a tabletop from Ikea. Now, where the problem kind of came in there was that the tabletop was hollow except for a little cardboard kind of spacer inside there. Um, so it worked great for the first couple of days, but then over time, uh, a lot of our attachments in order to secure the modular pieces uh, ended up coming loose because the screws and the anchors didn't have anything to hold on to. So today what we're going to be showing you is how we create this modular desk using an actual wood, a pine wood to be more specific. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into how we create this. Before we actually dive into creating the new desk, we did want to show you what it looked like with the IKEA tabletop or desktop, um, just to give you an idea of what we're going to be creating. So over here we have our desktop, um, which was actually bigger and we cut it down into three separate pieces. Um, and this is actually fully secure, so this no longer flips up and down. But what we did is we added a side piece over here on the flip up bracket that flips up and then lines it up perfect with the top and then secured by some table leaf brackets underneath. And then on the front section here, we actually added some slide outs and then created a front piece that will then latch in also with the table leaf uh, latches. Now, what's really cool about this is it created a lot more room to place the keyboard and a mouse over here. Um, but like we mentioned earlier, with this desktop being hollow, after a, a little bit of time, these actually end up shaking loose a little bit. So that's why we're gonna be going with the solid pine wood. Now, the pine wood is gonna be a decent amount heavier than this hollow desk. Uh, however, with the old flip up desk that we had back out here, uh, that was some old oak wood and that was really heavy. So our pine's gonna definitely be lighter than that. Um, so we're really looking forward to getting this done. And uh, you may ask why there's an opening over here and we designed it that way so that we could put our clamp on cup holder there so we could have our coffee. But anyway, that's what it looked like with the Ikea desktop. Let's go ahead and get out there and start cutting the pine wood so we can make it anew. For your supplies, you're going to need wood for your desk surface, two drop leaf supports with hardware, five table locks with hardware, a level, screws and anchors, a measuring tape, a pencil and a square, a folding shelf bracket, two 16 inch shelf brackets, they can be folding or not completely up to you, a drill, a circular saw, painting supplies, this could include primer, paint, paint roller, tray, sealer, or stain if you're choosing to go that route instead of painting, a sanding block, and then wood filler. And the wood filler is optional depending on the surface of the desk that you're creating. So step number one is going to be measure your space. What you're trying to find here is the largest size that you want for your entire desk, but then also the size of your main desk that's gonna be permanent and in position. So for us, our main permanent piece is going to be 31 and a half inches long and 17 and a half inches deep. Then on the right hand side of our desk, we're going to add the flip up piece, which is going to be eight and a half inches wide by the 17 and a half deep. And then our front piece is actually going to be about a quarter of an inch less in the length than our main piece, uh, mainly because we have a little lip on our closet that we need it to get past. So our front piece is going to be 31 and a quarter by six and a half deep. So that's step number one. Step number two is going to be go ahead and measure your wood and get it cut, which uh, that's what we did right now. We measured at our 31 and a half length and our 17 and a half depth. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut it out of the wood.
So as you guys saw when we were measuring, we did draw lines that went all the way across and all the way up for our main piece. And by doing that, we were able to cut all the way through and create our main desk piece. Now at the same time, when we cut off the front section, uh, we were left with this piece, which now we'll just need to take a small quarter of an inch off, and this will be good and ready to go for the front. And then here on this secondary piece, we'll just need to cut the line that goes completely across, which will put us right at our 17 and a half, and then we'll just measure our eight and a half and cut that. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get these last two pieces cut, and then we'll move on to step number three, which is getting it painted. So we've got all three of our pieces cut and they're looking good. Now we're just gonna hit the edges with some sandpaper. And then it's on to step number three, which is actually to paint or stain your wood. And this is a decision you guys can make whether you wanna do it or not. Um, for us, we actually have some leftover spray paint lying around. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a go and see how well it adheres, especially with this wood being so smooth and in such good condition. Uh, now, normally we don't use spray paint on larger wood projects like this, uh, just because we haven't had the best experience in the past. Uh, but with this, we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. All right, so we tried a couple coats with the spray paint and it was going on pretty good, but it wasn't quite giving us the coverage or the quality that we were going for. On top of that, we actually ended up running out and we would have had to have gone and bought more. So instead we took some primer we had on hand, gave it a couple coats and then used some white paint and rolled on a couple coats of that. And overall, we're much happier with the coverage and the quality of doing it that way. Um, it's no, by no means perfect, but we're happy with the way it turned out. And then after that all dried up, we went ahead and gave it a few coats of sealer in order to protect it, uh, especially since our cat Kobe likes to run willy nilly back there on the desk. And uh, we're gonna be working back there quite a bit. So we wanna make sure to protect against wear and tear. But anyway, these are all set and ready to go. So we're gonna head inside and get them installed. So here we are back in the desk area. And as you can see, our brackets are already installed on the wall. And that's because earlier when I showed you, we've already done the project. So we figured we're making the exact same desk just out of a different material. So there's no sense in moving our brackets. Now there's a couple of things that we want to note here. One is that uh, these brackets that we have up here right now are solid and they don't fold. Now, before when we had our desk back here, we did have it on folding brackets. This is actually one of the ones we used right here. Um, and we realized over time that we actually only folded the desk down like once or twice the whole time we've been in the RV. And uh, plus we couldn't find any folding brackets locally when we were making the new desk uh, the first time. So we just ran to the store and grabbed these. Now, after we've actually had these up with the new desk for a while, we do like them a lot more because A, like I said, we don't really fold it down that often. Uh, and B, Kobe really does like to use this as his playground at times and having these in just makes us feel a little bit more secure with it not falling down uh, not that it ever did before but you know just peace of mind um, now one thing to note over here is like I mentioned this was one of the folding brackets for our previous desk as well um, and it is actually a little bit too small for that desk so um, we actually have one, a new one on order from Amazon it's the 12 inch one um, and we definitely suggest if you're going to be creating a desk or anything like that you should get a larger size um, that goes out at least at least half the depth of your desk uh, just to give you more support there um, so for today we're going to go ahead and install our side piece over here um, but when we get the new bracket we're going to pull this out and put it up there um, and then in order to secure all of these brackets to the wall we use screws and anchors uh, just really secure way for us and we feel comfortable putting a desk up that way so something to keep in mind um, but anyway that about wraps it up for the bracket so i'm going to go ahead and get our main desk piece and then we'll get that installed on our brackets so now that our desktop's in the right position, we can go ahead and hold it down from the top and then screw in from the bottom. Uh, 
All right, there we are, good and level. All right, so now that we're totally secured over here, now we're gonna take our side piece, attach it to our side bracket, and then we'll go ahead and get installing the latches. All right, couple quick things to note here. Number one, you might be able to see a little bit of a lean with our side piece over here. And that's mainly because how I had mentioned earlier that our bracket's too small for the wood we're trying to support. So it's actually putting undue pressure on our screws and our anchors and the bracket itself. So in an ideal world, once we get our larger bracket, fold down bracket later this week and we replace it, it should be able to hold and lock itself in place. However, since we needed to lock and secure our front piece in a different fashion, we went ahead and decided to do our side piece the same way. Um, and that's by using these table leaf locks. Um, we actually got these on Amazon. We'll link to them in the description box. Uh, but these things have been a blessing. Um, we tried piano hinges. We tried a million different things and nothing would work. Uh, but these things are absolutely awesome. Uh, so the way it works is you'll install this side uh, on one piece and then this other little lip on the other piece that you're trying to secure. And then once they're installed, you just flip this little latch and it latches onto this other piece and locks into place. Um, so for us specifically with having the smaller bracket that's not the right size, this is gonna be great. Um, but if you have a folding bracket that's the right size, you probably wouldn't need to take this step, uh, at least for your side piece. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get these installed. All right, so now that we've got the right side all attached with our table leaf locks and our uh, folding bracket, now it's time to get the front all set up. And we have these cool devices, which are table leaf supports. Uh, and the way they work is you actually attach them to the bottom portion of your main desk here, and then you'll slide them out like so. And then we're able to put our front piece on, and then we'll use more of the table leaf locks in order to secure it once it's on, uh, on position here. Uh, but for these two, we actually have two of them. We'll have one on each side here so that we can pull them out and create the extra support. And in order to get them installed, I want to make sure since our front piece is about six and a half inches, I'm going to make sure that I have about six inches of our table leaf support that comes out. So we will put it Close there. And right there is about six inches. Perfect. Now I'll take my pencil and mark my holes. In. Now on to the second one. However, if we ever want to bring Katie's computer back here and give her some space, or if we just need some extra surface space, it's as easy as putting it all back into place. And there it is. All right, so our modular desk is all finished up and we're really thrilled with the way that it turned out. Um, we hope this video has been helpful for you guys if you're looking to create something similar. Uh, but to give you a little bit of a backstory, the main reason that we even uh, thought of this or, or created it was because we've been running into a little bit of difficulty out in our living room. 
So if you've seen our uh, hidden slide out table that comes out from our media cabinet, uh, awesome table, we use it all the time. But the problem is, is that we work in our RV all the time as well. So when we post up Katie's computer out there, it's gotten to a point to where every single day the slide out table's out all day, every day while we're working, and it takes up a lot of the room out there. Um, now that table out there is perfect when we want to do like uh, big projects or we want to team up together and both get on our computers at the same time. But for everyday use, we like to push it aside and enjoy that space a little bit. So by creating this desk back here, we made enough room for Katie to comfortably work at her computer and uh, not hurt her hands or anything like that, give her space for her mouse and keyboard, um, while at the same time letting us reclaim our living room on a daily basis, except for when we have those big projects or we want to work together out there. Um, so whatever reason you guys may create your own modular desk, uh, we'd love to hear about it, uh, about how you went about it and the reasons as well. Uh, and then that about wraps it up, but I am going to leave some links in the description box below to all the hardware we used. Uh, those will be affiliate links, uh, but then also check back here soon. I'll include a link over to our website where we're going to be writing a post that will go into a little bit more detail if you want to swing over there and check that out. Uh, but other than that, that about wraps it up. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to let us know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again soon.